Hello everybody, my name is Trevor Slesky, the owner of Monster Hobbies in High River, Alberta, Canada. So I'm getting closer to the Laurel and Hardy event at the Museum of the Highwood, which is April 28th at 7 p.m. On um, April, yeah, <sighs> I'm tired. I've been working on this for a while. So I'm going to just go down and show you guys how my progress is on the Laurel and Hardy Model T. And here's Stan and Laurel. Hold on. In the big business Model T with the trees in the back. And there's my model so far of the same car. Now, um, there of course is the pickup bed which goes in those holes. And the body will go on there. Now one thing that happened, that I wish didn't happen, if you look on this side, the paint job is really good. On this side, I don't know if you can see this. Yeah, how would you see it? <laughs> there is a sag in the paint and a big drip that happened under that door. And there's nothing I can do about this right now because I'm running out of time for the show. Like, today is Thursday the 27th. So, I'm going to attempt, I'll glue this in place, but I'm going to attempt to try not to glue the body. This is going to be tricky for me. I'm going to try to do it in such a way that I, the body is not glued in. It's just going to snugly fit in place. And I hope the seat isn't going to mess this up. Because the seat needs to be glued in there. Into that position. But I'm going to try to make it so that I can take this body off after the movie. Strip it down and repaint it and address the issue. After the movie. Which is going to be tricky... <laughs> tricky to the point that you guys just won't understand how tricky it is unless you've actually tried to do this stuff with real models. Now something I found out, Laurel and Hardy can fit in this Model T nicely with the top up without hitting the bowler hat. So I don't understand what happened between my last video and this video that is making it so that Stan and Ollie, if I put the seat in here, the actual seat cushion, their bowler hats hit the top of that roof. Now I don't understand what happened there, because in the last video, oh maybe that's what happened there. Ah, could be. Okay, I think I figured it out. Because in the last video, there they're able to get in there without their bowler hats hitting the top of this roof, but I think I may have just figured that out. Yeah, that's what it is. It was just the position of that seat. Because now it's not hitting. Okay, well that's good. Glad that got solved. There we go. Now, <laughs> here's the other problem. Model T is all black. And Currently, you can't really see that Laurel and Hardy are in here. So I'm going to have to do it in such a way that they uh, are visible. <laughs> I guess for best term. But this thing will not be displayed at the museum with this top up. So you will be able to see Stan and Laurel. Now the other thing that's going to be interesting is this steering wheel. If I'm going to make it so that the body comes off... Okay, this steering wheel, it has to go in, it has to get rotated because the knuckle has to line up down below with the column that's going into, actually the uh, the tie rod end. Then i got to glue Stan and all these arms on. Now, I don't know how I'm going to go about this <laughs> because they're supposed to be holding the wheel. 
Oops, it looks like I'm running... I ran out of batteries there. Okay, so I found out what the issue was. If you... There's a little groove in the floorboards here. And the seat comes down like that and fits into the groove. Now, I think if the seat is a little too much in the groove at a different place, it rides up higher here. So because it rode up a bit higher, it pushed the guys up higher. Which in turn, when you put the top on, causes them, their bowler hats, to hit the bottom of the roof on the inside. So that's what the problem was. So I'm not going to display the roof at the museum because, of course, you can't see Stan and Ollie. But the roof is good for when it goes on my shelf later on and the dust is falling down. Now, if the dust is, if they're not there, of course, the dust is going to fall into all the cracks of Stan and Ollie, and uh, that's going to be a pain. I usually, I have this number 10 brush, which I use just to brush the dust out of everything, but, you know, it's a pain. But the other thing I found out is, by moving the seat and everything, it actually tightened up all the the spaces between the hood and the um, the cowl. So, yeah, obviously, I had it wrong. Now. I got these spare Model T tires here. Hang on a sec. Can I? There we go. These Model T tires are extra. What I did is I took one of the wheels, because I've got six of these, remember, from previous videos? Actually, I got more, more like 10 or 11 Model Ts. So what I did is I took one of the wheels, and these are all in metal axles that go straight through. So I crazy glued one of the wheels to the metal axles and I stuck the metal axle in my drill press and I put the tire onto the rim and then put it in the drill press of course and put it on the sandpaper block and hit the trigger and I ground the uh, seam line out of the the tires as best I could so I'm gonna change the tires on here for these ones that were all machined in the drill press and I'm going to paint Stan and Laurel, so let's go and see that. I mean, I'm just going to swap these, nothing too exciting. But let's go see painting Stan and Laurel. So here's an interesting question. In the 1920s, in black and white film, you know, there's a picture from Big Business. Uh, black and white film, of course, takes color out and replaces it with grayscale. So now the question is, and here I'll just zoom up here. Oops, okay, well, I guess I'll take that up in the tripod. Huh. Okay, zoom up some more. Here we go. Now the question is, of course, when you're going into black and white, and everything goes grayscale, what is the actual color of clothing and whatnot that they're wearing? Now, I don't think everybody in the 20s had, like, black and gray clothes. Now, of course, their bowler caps would be black, because that's just the way it goes. Um, now, I'll just close this up for a sec. Here's a colorized picture of uh, Stan and Laurel in in that Model T. Now the, the question is this may have been colorized of course after the film. Um, it's hard to tell like nowadays especially with computer colorization but one thing is that Ford would never have had a blue Model T. Now the fenders are black but they wouldn't have painted like blue and things like this inside there on that era of Model T. So the colorization is not quite right. Although, you know, the tree is green. Stan is probably wearing a brown thing. Laurel's tie, that now because it's grayscale, it could be blue like they've done. It could be black. It could be red. You know, there's so many different combinations and it's really hard to know like what they'd be wearing. Now here's a here's another colorized picture from one of the other movies 
they get a flat tire and they got to change it. But you see the spokes here are kind of purple looking. And on, on a Model T they'd be black, of course. Maybe on this film of a film it doesn't look like so bad. But like there's all these things. He, you know, on that grayscale, okay, they got him with a purple tie here. But on that grayscale, he could be wearing green. See, it's pretty uh, strange to try to think about it because there wasn't. Nobody took a color picture of them back then. They used the black and white film because it was less expensive. Okay, so this is where you got to do a little extra research. If you go clothing of the 1920s. Here you get like different different pictures on your Google search. So we click over to men here. Now see like this picture here. Okay, we'll zoom in. Zoom in, eh? Alright. So now we've got like Bob and Doug McKenzie reviewing 1920s shirts, eh? See like look at this. Okay, there's green. If you were to grayscale this, this could come out black. So again, it it, it could be preference as to uh, how this goes. See, like here, you got like a really dark gray, a blue gray, a silver gray, you know, brownish, a green gray. Oops, oh, you're just looking at related pictures. There's like a blue black a gray well that's 1914 but still you know it's going to be around that time period but you see there's a gray scale this guy this could be black this could be green you know his pants could be really dark brown although it's a suit so they probably be the same colors but again you don't know there's sepia tone so I guess in a way you could kind of just make it up. Huh, hats of the twenties. Yeah. So there you are. Here's to you. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna look up some of these and then I'll just figure out a color for Stan and Ollie and we'll go with it. And these are the Citadel paints that I used for the skin tones for Laurel and Hardy. And this is how they ended up. Kind of skin tony. It uh, looks a little clunky all over their clothes there, but I'll soon fix that up. And I thought I'd put uh, Stan's hand up holding his, his uh, bowler hat on. So anyway, let's go see what they look like when you give them mustaches and hair. And about 600 paint colors later, and 9,000 hours in the future, we have uh, Stan and Oliver Hardy with their arms glued in and painted up. And ready to be displayed in their Model T. <laughs> So here we have the Laurel and Hardy Model T from Big Business, pickup truck that they were driving. The only thing I couldn't really add right now is the Christmas tree in the back of the pickup bed. And that's simply because I don't have a scale tree small enough. <laughs> they all were way too huge. Anyway, let's, let's take a look at Laurel and Hardy right there. Now I use the Games Workshop Citadel paints with their eight, 8 paint process, sorry 6 paint process. So that would be a base color followed by a, uh, a shade paint followed by layer 1 and layer 2 and in some cases dry brushing with the highlight color. So I'm just zooming back so this comes into better focus. Now, uh, for Stan, 
um, I decided to put Stan Laurel that is I decided to give him like a green sweater thing my old uncle Albert he used to always wear a green sweater so this was sort of like a bit of a tribute to that <laughs> and I used a lot of light grays and things so you could see where his legs are because the Model T is all black and it's very very hard to see like black on black and with uh, Oliver Hardy here I gave his uh, clothes a little bit of a okay a little bit of a gray to him as a highlight they call this um, sheer black if you follow the Games Workshop paint color schemes and then looking at our Model T Sorry for the backdrop of the store here. Okay, try to get this in focus here. Now, there we go. The Model T. Oh, I got an idea. There we go. Ground level. Well, a little bit ground unlevel. I got the uh, tripod skid pad on here. Okay. There's our Model T in the backdrop there, from the movie. I don't know, whatever. Let's just turn this around for a minute. Okay, now with the Model T, when you glue your headlights in, you're going to have to maneuver them because there's lines in the headlight that are etched in on the plastic. There we go. Etched in on the plastic and they run up and down, which is vertical. So you want to make sure you rotate those headlights around in there before you add the drops of glue in. I usually use liquid glue and I paint it on the edge in between the clear and the actual plastic, black plastic headlight bezel. And that's so that they can actually glue in place. Alright, there's something I want to point out here with the Model T's. When you're building the AMT kit, you may think that you're running into a problem here, but you're not. Now this is the thing here. There's the front of the rear fender and there's the tire. And it looks like the tire is about to hit that front of the rear fender. Now you may think, okay, well this the frame needs to be cut here and this needs to come back so that the wheel is centered to the center line down here and not missing the hub so that there's a lot of room in, in between there to there, right? That is the incorrect assumption. If you look at a side view picture of a real Model T from the 20s, even going all the way back to the first Model T in 1908, even some of the Model N runabouts and the Model K and those ones that were, you know, pre-1906 from Ford, they all do the same thing. There's hardly any distance between there and the tire itself. And that is because when the car hits a bump, the wheel doesn't go this way. It goes up and down, straight up and down. Therefore, this here wouldn't matter because when the wheel goes straight up, it actually moves out of the way of that fender arrangement. So when you're building your AMT Model T kit and you run into this situation, you are correct. It is supposed to be like that. Now the other thing is the height here looks incredibly tall. Again, if you look at a Model T from 1924, that is the correct height. Because remember, these cars actually do sit up this high because they were designed for going over rough roads that we don't experience. All our roads these days are paved and everything. And that really came in in the 30s more than anything. But in the early days, all the way up to the 30s, there was a lot of clearance for those bad roads. So that if you hit a bump, you uh, wouldn't bog your car into it. And I know I've seen a documentary in Australia. Model T's, um, farmers in Australia actually really love them. Because there's a road in Australia that's still a dirt road, <laughs> going into our generation that um, 
when they get the rainy seasons, just turns into gigantic mud for miles. Now the reason why the, the Model T was so popular was because the wheelbase from like there going back to the other wheel this way, right? The width, the width of the car was the same identical width as the horses and carriages. So the horses and carriages would go down that, that muddy road and they would carve the wheels in the wooden heavy wheels of the, the buggies would carve into the mud. Now then the guy with the Model T could drive in, you know, if he was lucky, wasn't the first guy on the road that day, he would actually drive in the ruts made by the wooden horse carriages. And he would be able to go right down those ruts in his Model T, and of course the mud would be like there, right? The top of the pen, or the top of the paintbrush here. So the guy's Model T would be able to run down that dirt road that was mud. Now the other cars like the Buicks and the Duesenbergs and, well, maybe not Duesenbergs, but the Buicks and uh, Dodges and that, they would actually have one side up, the other side in the rut, because they were a little wider than the Model Ts. So that's a little bit of trivia I saw. And now the interesting part here, next interesting part, because this is all interesting, if you like this, there is our roof, and we are able to put it on, although this is just all loose, right? There. And Stan and Laurel's head. Well, let's get this in focus. Their bowler hats clear the top of that roof. So, although I won't have the roof on for the museum, I can keep the dust out later, to a degree. Of course, dust is like, going to get everywhere because it's dust. And dare I do it. Mm, come on. There's our engine. Do -do -do, with white spark plugs any color you like as long as it's black heh <laughs> that was only in these years early model t's are color and 26 and 27 have color but 25 all black oh and one more thing to note the actual steering wheel does not have brass in it although i painted that copper that's the steering wheel i had on my old model t which I've just transferred into this one. I might leave that actually brass for this just because it stands out. But then again, I could paint it black and only Laurel and Hardy would stand out. Okay, so we will see you at the Museum of the Highwood on April 28th at 7 o'clock p.m. for some Laurel and actually Hardy and Laurel since they're not together. <laughs> And uh, yeah, it should be good. So we'll see you there.